Are you the one who is to come? Or are we to await another? Are you the one who is to come? In the midst of Advent, as we prepare the way of the Lord to hear this question on the lips of John the Baptist just seems strange. It just seems strange. In the gospel itself, we hear today that John, that John by Jesus' identification, is the prophet. The prophet who is carrying the great message to prepare the way of the Lord to make his path straight because although he has baptized with water for repentance, there is one greater than he who is to come, who will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And John himself has declared that this Jesus is the one. And we have John today saying to his disciples, go to Jesus and ask him, are you the one who is to come? This seems just so strange. And how are we to understand it? How are we to appreciate it as we find ourselves called to prepare the way of the Lord? Who is this John? And what is it that he tells us? The scriptures are rich rich indeed, with the stories of John and what he said and what he did, who he was. We have to remember, <coughs> the scriptures tell us that John was a, John's was a miraculous birth after the prayers of a mother and father too old to ever hope to have a child. And he was thus marvelously and wondrously conceived. And more than that, his birth aligned with that of Jesus's. The one born of a woman too young and being a virgin should not be bearing a child at all. A miraculous birth, thank you. A bounty beyond my wishes. <laughs> a wondrous gift of God, born to be a prophet. We're told that John grew in the strength of the Spirit. As his father had promised, he never had strong drink. He was given aside to the purposes of God's fulfillment. He wore rough clothes and a leather belt and was out in the wilderness eating uh, locusts and honey. And he spoke with power so that the world knew that what he said was coming from God. And people came in droves hearing what he had to say, to repent and to turn their way to the Lord. But he did not stop there, not just saying that the promise was being fulfilled, but he identified that promise that the one, as the ancient texts had promised, the one who was coming, he was not worthy to tie the sandals for. And he identified that one as Jesus. In the scriptures, John is known to have stood in the streets of the city and seeing his Lord pointed to him and said, this is the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the scriptures are so full of the wondrous story of the place and time of baptism when crowds were coming and their hearts were stirred so that they entered the waters of baptism for repentance and there Jesus arrived and John recognizing him saying this is not the way it ought to be you should be baptizing me and yet he submitted and pointed the way that Jesus' will would be done, that God's will would be done. And here we have John saying, are you the one who is coming? How does this make sense? What is this moment and how can it be? 
What we have to know is John is asking this question from prison. He has stirred the people up. He has upset the order of things. He has offended the king. And he is in prison. He has gone so far as to point out to the king and to the world that the king is living in sin for having taken his brother's wife. John's not a shrinking violet. He is there in prison. And so we might think, is John now fearful and, as we know, will be facing death? Is he in his fear turning now to doubt and to want to hear from Jesus that he's chosen the right way? Maybe so, but I don't think so. We also know that this imprisonment has gone on longer than anyone might have expected. And maybe it's the sense of despair and desperation that the fulfillment of God's promise has not yet happened. So, so maybe, maybe John is asking, when? Or is it going to be someone else? Well, it could be, but I don't think so. John had never wavered from his ministry and mission. He had never been fearful to speak out the truth. He had never been fearful to say that everyone who came to the waters needed to repent of their lives. He didn't shrink when the scribes and the Pharisees came hypocritically, and he called them a brood of vipers. When he knew of the sin of the king, he could have remained quiet, but he did not. He called for repentance from everyone and was not embarrassed to do so. Did John ask his question out of fear or despair? I don't think so. If we read the text with care, he asks his disciples to go and ask Jesus if he is the one who was coming so that they might all have the answer, so that they might all hear the truth. And his strange question is brought by those disciples. And not only is it an odd question, but jo Jesus gives his classically different answer. If he knows, why not simply say yes? I am the one that the world has longed for and waited for, but he does not. Instead, he goes to the ancient words and says, tell John what you see and hear. The blind receive their sight. The deaf hear. The lame leap for joy. And good news is brought to the poor. Even the dead are raised. The ancient words from the prophets that would show the time is ripe for the coming of the promised Messiah. Go and tell John this, he says. John sent them so that they might hear and know an answer. And Jesus gives it to them to take back to John. And when they do, they come not only hearing the truth and the fulfillment of the ancient prophecies, but as they speak it, they become the carriers of God's word themselves. They don't say, your cousin Jesus said yes. They said, the testimony of the most ancient times is seen now. And in their speaking it, they become prophets of the good news. John knew in his heart that those who would be left behind after his death 
would wonder and worry and fear had they chosen right, had they chosen well. And he gave them the ancient answer from the word of God so that they might hear it and see it and know it and in speaking it, proclaim it. They needed to ask the question, are you the one who is to come? And Matthew, in writing this text and letting us hear it today, know that we are the ones who must ask the question, are you the one who is to come? So that if we hear the answer and we grasp it, we find its truth in our lives and we become prophets of that good news and the ones who too are helping to prepare the way of the Lord and making his path straight. Jesus, are you the one who is to come? That's a question for you and for me. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.